you deal with bad behavior like that fast, and then you focus on the good kid. Okay, this is a three-year-old being sent home from daycare because he's hitting. Feeling lost, how can we help change this behavior? He's three years old, you can use the behavior board, and you put down no hitting, and you say the daycare is going to tell me when you hit. Now, he's only three. There's so many different ways we can deal with this. The consequence could be something like this. Whoever you hit, you're going to bring your favorite toy for them to play with and take home for a whole week. And you talk to the other parent. Um, so you say you're sorry and say, here, you can play with this for a week. See how well, see how much they hit after that. Um, they're pretty little. You got to kind of be a little bit good at this to pull that one off. But it's, it's the one I would have used. Um, yeah. So if not, just have a consequence at home. But I like the one where if you hit someone, you have to do something nice for them. And the kid just gets to play with that for a week. Oh, my son is three. Oh, so I got an easy one for this. My son is three and a half, and now he mimics my disabling. Ill. Oh, I'll say my disabling. You mean disciplining? Okay. Um, I know, it's just typos. I'll say put your toys away, time for bed, and he'll laugh and repeat what I, repeat what I say. How do I deal with that? Um, okay, so, okay, it's actually a really easy one. I'm just thinking so many different ways you could do it. How old is he? Three and a half. Okay, so I would say, okay, uh, put your toys away within 10 minutes. Always use a timer, always. So use the behavior board and say, put your toys away within 10 minutes of being asked to do so. Do not pick, do not say, do what I say within 10 minutes. Be very specific, a specific action. Put your toys away within 10 minutes of being asked to do so. That is the rule. If he doesn't do it, there's a consequence. So say, okay, so within 10 minutes, you have to put your toys away now. And then he goes, within 10 minutes, you have to put your toys away. I, this is what I would do. Completely ignore. Oh, you got one more minute. One more minute. Beep, beep, 10 minutes is up. Oh, I see the toys aren't put away. Let's go to the behavior board. Okay, here's your consequence. He will stop mimicking because it's not going to work. It obviously gets under your skin and annoys you. It's a very disrespect. It just, it's a tell for me. It says he doesn't respect you. Work on your leadership skills. The behavior board is how you start to learn how to be a leader. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's how I would handle it. Let him mimic all you want. You're going to win. <laughs> You're going to go to that behavior board and say, okay, the consequences is I hate you. It's a, and I'll tell you what, you keep coming at me. It'll be media blackout for 24 hours. You look at the behavior board. You'll understand what I just said. So yeah, easy, just take control, calm. All discipline is a business transaction. No emotions, none, none. Um, when you're with kids, a lot of parents, I don't know why they do this. Uh, I know it's for them, but I'm I always try and figure out why do they do this? You know when a kid does something bad and then you discipline, then you keep talking about it? Why do you keep talking about it? You're rubbing salt in the wound. It's for you. It makes it, you think you're driving it home. You're actually dragging them down. You deal with bad behavior like that fast. And then you focus on the good kid. I'm going to tell the pool story. I hate telling this story because I've, I've told it so many times. I can't stand the sound of my voice when I'm saying it. But it's my absolute best story for explaining leadership parenting and why you don't discuss what they do wrong. You deal with it, but you don't discuss it. It's extremely important. Really good message. Okay, I'm sure you've heard this story. I've told it a million times. I haven't told it much lately because, as I said, I'm bored with myself telling it. But anyway, um, okay, the pool story. True story. My son was eight years old. We had a pool in the backyard. It was his eighth birthday. So he had five eight-year-old boys over friends. So there was six eight-year-old boys in the pool, and I was there on my own that day. My husband took our little girl out for a while. So it was just me there, and I was supervising these six boys in the pool. Now, I'm a safety nut, so all I'm doing is counting heads. That's why none of the moms stuck around, because I said to them, if you're going to stay here, don't even talk to me. All I'm doing is counting heads. So they, went, they just all took off. <laughs> they just wanted to sit and have coffee and chat. I don't do that. I'm counting heads. So anyway, uh, and I had this big blow-up toy called Whaley. It was giant. So it was way off to the side, because I said, look, the, one, the rule is no Whaley in the pool. If Whaley's in the pool, I can't see behind him. Three kids could drown behind Whaley, so it's a safety issue. So no Whaley, okay, no. I didn't want to take the air out because they're eight years old. They can understand this. And I didn't have a foot pump for the to put, pump it back up again. Anyway, sure enough, one of the kids took Whaley in the pool. So I said to him, and I went like this. I said, Whaley out of the pool now. And he said to me, no. My son went like this because he, <laughs> he knew mom knows how to take care of business. 
fully clothed. I'm in the pool, had that kid out of the pool like that. And he's sitting beside me. And I said, you're going to sit there for 10 minutes. And then I'm counting five heads in the pool. They're all playing. He's sitting beside me. And this is what I'm doing. 10 minutes. Oh, I saw you in that soccer game the other day. You got a goal. Good on you. And remember the other day we worked on that test? I heard you got like 85% on that test. Way to go. High five, whatever. And then I said, what's your favorite PlayStation game? He's talking to beat. Time's up. 10 minutes. Okay, go back in the pool. Have fun. I couldn't get rid of him. He wanted to sit and talk and talk and talk. He was having a great time. Okay. Fine. I kept looking at my son. Help. So it, finally, my son got him back in the pool because they needed three per size to play base, uh, base, uh, basketball. Anyway, he goes back in the pool, and that was that. He was good as gold the rest of the afternoon. Not only that, he was my helpful little assistant in shadow. I could not get rid of this kid. Anyway, hours later, uh, seemed like weeks, but anyway, hours later, um, his mom came to pick him up, and he, she said to him, and bless her heart, she was just so, he was difficult. She was so frustrated. She said to him, were you rotten as always? And he kicked her in the shin and off they went. <laughs> but anyway, she was doing the best she could. She was just so beaten down by this kid. But anyway, so that was it. Now, why did I, why? Now, initially, I was very clear about the rule. Whaley cannot go in the pool. I didn't overstate it because I'm a leader. You don't go on about stuff as a leader. Just Whaley, it's too dangerous. I explained why. It's too dangerous. Okay, they're eight years old. They can understand that. Then when he brought Whaley in the pool, why did I not say, can you please take Whaley out of the pool? Because I'd sound like me, you know, I just said Whaley out of the pool now because that's a safety issue. He just broke a very important safety rule. I do not need to ask him. I need to order him to get Whaley out of the pool because it is a safety issue, right? And then when he said no, I would not repeat, like I would never repeat myself. I take action. Soon as I've said something and they disrespect me, I take action. I'm in the pool, got him out. He didn't even know what happened. He was out sitting beside me. Then when he's sitting beside me, I said, you're going to sit here for 10 minutes. Why would I not say why? He already knows he's not a moron. I don't need to rub it in. I've already done the discipline. You discipline the bad behavior, then you focus on the good kid. Now I'm focused on the good kid. I'm bringing out the best in him. He started out like this. And then by the end of it, he was, and then I got another goal. And did you see, I love the PlayStation. Yeah, yeah. He feels like a million bucks when he's with me. Talk about power. That's leadership. I just exercised my leadership. Now he's all over me. He can't do enough to please me after that. That is the epitome of leadership. Also, because I, I build, I'm focused on the good kid now. I'm building that relationship. Also, when the 10 minutes was up and I said, okay, go back in the pool and have fun. If I had said, don't bring Whaley in the pool again, I would have erased everything I just did with that kid. I would have just cut him down. What an insult. What a nasty thing to say. He's already been punished. Don't humiliate him. Don't bring Whaley in the pool again. What a horrible thing to say. I just built him up. He feels like a million bucks. Okay, go back in the pool. Have fun. Good luck with the basketball game. Building him up, building him up. I focus on the good kid and it comes out. When you get good at this, that's all you get is the good kid. I've worked with delinquent teenagers. I've worked with all sorts of kids. I know how to get the best out of them. That's the best story I can tell. I got a million stories. A lot. I tell a lot more in coaching because they're a little bit more raw, a little bit more, you know, especially with the troubled teens. Uh, but that's that's basically how it works. Does that make sense? That to me, epitom that story epitomizes leadership. I don't let anything go. I, I deal with bad behavior, but then I focus on the good kid. That's how you get respect. He was all over me. Couldn't get rid of him. Couldn't. Can I help you with the cake? Oh, God. <laughs> Jeez. No, I got it. Thanks, though. Like, I couldn't get rid of him. So that's leadership. Yeah. But parents just, they can't help themselves. Now, remember when you took Whaley in the pool? Now, you know you shouldn't have done that. You're just knocking them down. You're making them feel like garbage. You're making them feel like garbage. Okay. I just had this on Facebook. It was how to deal with jealous three-year-old that's very jealous of the eight-month-old brother. Play with them together and make the three-year-old the hero. Oh, look. Oh, he just looks up to you. Oh, wow. Look. Wow. And then you help. Can you help him with that? Oh, wow. Look at that. Make him the hero, the big brother, the protector. Jealous. Well, I don't know if it's a girl or I don't know if it's a boy. It doesn't matter. Make them the hero. I got a million different answers for that. That's just one of them. That's my latest. I get bored with my answers, so I have to mix them up. <laughs> and in co when I'm coaching people, they all get different. Like sometimes I'll, they'll refer a sister or a friend or whatever to me, and then they'll compare notes. And they say, did you have a different Lisa? 
I give you different personalized advice. So, and I get bored with saying the same things all the time. So I'll often mix it up and they'll get like <laughs> completely different advice, same outcome, but, and it depends on their personalities too. I work to the parents' strengths and their weaknesses to, you know, to figure all that in, but it's quite funny. Yeah. It's funny when I get parents and they say, why did you tell my sister to do that and me to do this? I said, well, because she has more patience than you do. And I don't want to push you as hard. And they go, oh, okay. Uh, three-year-old starting to refuse to eat dinner, new behavior. Yeah, they're three. They often find their power at three. Uh, it goes two ways. At three years old, they start to be able to stop and think before they act. They start to be able to reason. Doesn't mean they're going to do it, but it means they, they, they're getting the ability to learn how to do these things. Anyway, am I running late? No, I'm okay. Anyway, they'll go one of two ways. If you're a leader before they turn three, they get easier. Super, that's, that's when you just go, ooh, walk in the park. They're not toddlers with all feet, no brains anymore. They just start to get easy because they know you're in charge and they feel safe and they're happy. It's high self-esteem. It's great. If you're not a leader, if you're a pleaser parent, they go the other way. So they could just be controlling you with this. It could just be a part of that rebellion at not having a leader. That's at three. That's when that happens. It just goes like that. Oh, so you got twins. They just turned three. I struggle with comforting one that got hurt and disciplining the other. First of all, and this comes up all the time in coaching. Why did the other one hit that one? Did the other one cause it? Um, I don't discipline the hitter if the other one antagonized them. I just don't. May sound wrong, but there's a whole system around that. But yeah, so uh, make sure you've got to identify, first of all, why they hit. That's the most important thing. And use the behavior board. Put down no hitting. Um, don't put down, Don't put down no antagonizing or anything like that. But yeah, watch them like a hawk and say, you know what? He hit you. But because you went like this, so I'm not going to punish him for that. I'm going to punish you instead. You started it. It goes something like that. They're three. They can start to understand. They won't maybe understand it at first, but a few times they'll start to get it. You kind of learn as you go. A lot of kids will say, I don't know. I didn't understand. Well, you'll, you'll learn as we go. Or you'll know next time, won't you? Like they're, It's a learning process. Don't expect them to get this right away. Three-year-old whines for almost everything and immediately freaks out. By the age of three, that's a learned behavior. It says to me that it's worked. You must have fed that at some time, and that's why. Stop feeding the whining, and it will end. Yeah, it just does. I do yell because I get frustrated. You're right. That's exactly why I was asking for help. I don't want to be a screaming mom. Thank you. You know, I would say, actually, I had a client, a new client today, and neither of them yell. It throws me off. It's so rare. Most parents yell. That's why they hire me. Most parents yell because uh, they don't know what else to do. The reason they yell is because... It works in the moment, short term. So it does work, but you know darn well it's going to backfire down the road. It's not a good way to do it. It's not a good way to parent. Uh, leaders never yell. My son used to say, if my mom ever whispers, run. <laughs> That's what I'm disciplining. I would say, this is how I talk if I'm disciplining. I didn't have to do it with my kids really, but when I was babysitting or whatever, I'd say, look, I didn't like that. So here's what we're going to do. You're going to help me do the laundry. Do you understand? Okay. That's how I talk when I'm disciplining. It's very quiet, very calm, very slow. And kids, and I'm nodding a lot when I'm saying it. Do you understand? And kids tend to listen. But it takes practice because they know the old you who was more like this. Well, what do you want? What do you want? You know? So, yeah, when you're transitioning into the leadership, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Because they remember the old weaker you. Now you're becoming a strong leader. Watch the difference, though. One or two weeks. You get a couple of weeks under your belt with this. And you'll go, oh, that feels great. Because they are happier kids. They love a leader. Children need, crave, and want a leader. You provide that for them, you'll just see their stress just goes away. The tantrums start to diminish. Everything gets easier. Uh, by the way, check out my link above. You can get my free behavior board, my mini toddler courses, my big boot camp course, so you can hire me for coaching. In case you haven't heard this, coaching's completely changed now. I'm just super busy. So you have to email me and tell me why you want to hire me for coaching. I've only got five sessions off it, um, available now. That's where I get the best results. So it's the most rewarding for me. That's why. Selfish, aren't I? But that's where I get the best results. I like those. It's because my uh, boot camp course goes for five weeks too. So it makes sense. It takes about five weeks to learn how to be a leader. Three-year-old who screams to get their way sometimes blends with crying, genuine upset, then turns into screaming. Yeah, they're upset because they're not getting their own way. You do not address that. You do not need to address every single feeling that they have when it's just a feeling that they're not getting their own way, even though you said, no, they're mad at you. You do not need to validate that feeling. You do not need to validate every single thought, feeling, and fart with a kid. That is ludicrous. I know it's taught. It's very common out there. That's the pleaser parent. You validate all feelings. You know what's interesting? Most pleaser parents yell. 
Do you know why? Because <laughs> that, that method doesn't work. And they get frustrated and they end up yelling at their kids. So, yeah, um, it's okay that they yell. It's okay. That's their process. It's okay that they get upset that they're not getting their own way. That's okay. Let them do that. Just ignore. Five-year-old son, when ignoring after discipline on bad behavior, I explain him once why, but he continues to ask, why is this? Why I ignore it and tell him because I decide so. Okay, so I'm just going to set up an example here. This is the why, why, but why, but why, but why. You know what they're doing? They're, they're trying to break you down, okay? So what I would say, so you've done the behavior. Now he's five. You've done the behavior board and you say, okay, you broke the rule. Here's the consequence. And then you lay that out. Now, remember, there's always two consequences. The first one is the positive action. You start with that. If they won't do it, then you resort to the negative deprivation. An example of that would be 24-hour media blackout. It could be a bunch of different things. But anyway, so let's say that you've got that on the board. So you say, okay, so you broke the rule. Now you have to help me do the dishes. But why? But I don't like it. He's five. At five years old, I would say, I'll tell you what. If you keep at me, we'll do the 24-hour media blackout. And then I would say, and then I would just go quiet. See what he says then. If he says, but I don't understand. Say, okay, I'll tell you what. 24 hour media blackout starts now. Take that hard line. It won't happen again. You got to be willing to, to take the hard line initially. 24 hours. And that 24 hours, I don't go on about this in, enough in lies, but I do in coaching. Coaching is better because I get back and forth. But anyway, uh, that 24 hour media blackout, that's when you bond with them. You do it with them and you say, do you want to play a game? Look, we're doing it with you. Do you want to play a game? No, I hate you. I hate you. Okay, never mind. As soon as they calm down, ready for that game now? You keep coming at them. Keep coming at them. Every time you say that, you know what you're saying to them? Subconsciously, this is what they're hearing. I love you. Like, it's okay that you got 24-hour media blackout. That's fine. I'm doing it with you. Do you want to play games? You see? It's win, 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 win. It's all positive. Do you know what amazes me? Um, is that parents still think that parenting should come naturally. Years and years ago, it did. Do you know why? And it was easy. Do you know why? Because there, you had a village. Like 100 years ago, there was a village raising kids. You had parents, grandparents, cousins, aunts, uncles. Everyone lived nearby. And the neighbors were all, all the kids were out in the street, you know. So you had a whole village. And you had a whole bunch of people to watch how they were parenting. And there was a very specific way of doing it. It was very much the authority style, the, more the dictator style. Um, you didn't see a lot of parents playing with their kids. My dad, I was adopted when my parents were 38, which was very old for back then. I was born in 1960, and I was a newborn when they adopted me. Anyway, my dad was the only father on the street showing all the kids how to ride their bikes, and he was the oldest dad. He did play with kids. I was very lucky. He played with kids. It just wasn't done back then. Um, but they had a very clear understanding of what parenting was. There was a huge generation gap, which actually kind of gave them a little bit of an edge in their style of parenting. Wouldn't work with what I do. Um, but uh, yeah, so it was a different thing. That mentality of parenting should come naturally. People are pulling into today, which is ridiculous. You're on your own. You're isolated. You're looking at all these gorgeous moms on Instagram who are just killing it. They're perfect. That's not a fair representation of what parenting in is. It's the hardest job in the world with the least amount of training, but everyone expects you to be an expert, especially you. So go easy on yourself. Whenever people hire me and I'm working with them in coaching and they say, you know, we just don't know what to do. And I say, well, have you had any training? And they say, no, but we should know. And I'm like, <laughs> why? Why? How should you know? How should you know that? If anyone's singing, she yells to stop very angry. She just turned three years old, lots of angry. Okay. Well, I'm going to sort of, um, maybe English is your second language. That's why it's a little bit hard to understand there. I mean, good for you. I can barely speak, speak one language. I'm always impressed when people can speak more than one language. Anyway, a lot of my clients, uh, their English is their second language. <laughs> I just can't understand that. I couldn't imagine speaking another language. Anyway, um, at three years old, this is, this is what happens. When they turn three, they start to be able to reason. And that's why the behavior board starts at the age of three. They just reach this point where they can they stop and think before they act or they can reason they can start won't all do it all the time but they have the ability to start learning to do this they can go one way or the other if you're a leader they get easier if you're not a leader you're a pleaser parent they get more difficult because they found their power because you don't have it and all children instinctively need crave and want a leader they won't ask for it because they don't know what they need like they don't get that um, but yeah, they're very drawn to a leader. A leader makes them like themselves, brings out the best in them, and 
make, tend to make good choices with a leader. If you're not a leader for your child, they're going to be very vulnerable out there in the world. They're going to be very susceptible to bullying, peer pressure, the drug dealer on the corner, the internet, the Kardashians. You get the idea. If you're not, if they don't have a leader at home, they're going to go searching everywhere else for that leader. They instinctively need, crave, and want a leader. So you want that to be you. And at three, that's when you see it. If you're a pleaser parent, they get more difficult. If you're a leader, they get easier. It's just the way it is. It's three, though. That's when, oh, he was just great. Easiest kid in the world. Then he turned three. That's because he went like this. Hold on a minute. You're not a leader. I think I'll do it. That's, they don't quite go that far, but you get the idea. Is I didn't teach my, both my kids. Um, you know, they have things they're born with. You're just lucky. Uh, whether it's intelligence or looks or whatever. I said, never take pride in that because you did nothing to deserve it. That was just luck. Only take pride in what you control, how you treat people, what you do. So I taught them that from a very young age too. I wanted their, their pride to come from what, how they treat people, not how they look or not from their smarts or anything like that. So it's just something to think about. Spending time with my five-year-old twins, playing and so on, following behavior board, they're interactive with me, but does that affect their ability to play independently? Don't worry about that right now. Just work on their behavior and then down the road when everything's going good, say, look, I need some me time. So go you know, scram. I used to say to my kids, scram. And they'd happily go off and scram because I spent so much time playing with them. So they understood I needed my time and then they needed their time too. So yeah, don't worry about that right now. Work on the behavior. If that's why you got the behavior board, I'm assuming, right? So yeah. Focus on different things at different times. Your focus right now is on their behavior. Um, also, when children are, are not getting along, so you've got siblings who just fight all the time, uh, you never, ever uh, spend one-on-one -on -one time with them. It builds resentment and hate. You do everything together, but that's temporary because you're working on their relationship. And when you play in their world, play to the weakest link. So the youngest one, play to something there they can play. And it's never anything competitive. So then just have fun with them, and they'll bond over laughing at you. You know, you'll be doing silly games with them, uh, you know, rolling down hills and stuff like that. Just silly physical stuff usually. And uh, yeah, they'll bond over laughing at you. So there's certain things that are just temporary. You don't eliminate them completely down the road, but you, you emphasize it more initially when you're working on your leadership skills. What I teach here is I teach how to set you up as a leader. Once you're a leader, maintaining it is very different. Because I never really worked to get it. I already I had it when my kids were little, and then I just maintained it right through the teen years. Piece of cake. But getting respect is hard work. That's what I'm teaching here. So it's sort of that you're, you're kind of working it. You know, it's, it's hard work. It is. You've got to earn it. You've got to work for it. Uh, you've got to command it, not demand it. Uh, respect with your kids because you give it to get it. So, yeah, it is hard work. But isn't it worth it? I know with tantrums, you just wait for them to calm down and then move on. Perfect. What do you do when the tantrum interferes with something time sensitive, such as going to school or an appointment? And you have to go to that thing, especially in the instance of school when leaving the child. My son is five. Oh, okay, he's five. He's a bit older. Leave earlier and then wait him out when he has a tantrum or just pick him up and put him in the car anyway. But you still don't look at them or talk to them. Just pick them up. If you can manage it, he's five. It might be a bit more difficult at that age. But yeah, you just sort of pretend it's not even happening. Just follow through with what you were going to do. Why are they having a tantrum when you got to leave? I'm wondering. Oh, you're Australian. Well, yeah, my kids were raised in Australia. Um, do they only have tantrums when you're leaving? Uh, but, 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 but. Yeah, just leave earlier. Uh, I do have a new course coming out soon. It'll, it's called um, School. Oh, am I going to do that one? You know what? It was gonna, I was going to be setting up the school morning routine one. And... Uh, the person who works with me said, wait till August school morning because people are losing interest in school now because <laughs> there's other courses I could be doing. Uh, but yeah, get a routine going in the school morning. And uh, I've done videos on that. So check it out. Look up school morning routine in Bratbuster school morning routine. I've done videos on that. Maybe not on Facebook. I don't know what's on. I don't know. I don't do any of my social media anymore. But I know on TikTok and Instagram. Um, yeah, they're probably there. So look up school morning routine. How do you guide your five-year-old girl who gets very frustrated and throws tantrums when she cannot do something? Generally, it says because it, oh, okay. So because she can't do something. Mm. Mm. So she gets frustrated because she's trying to do a puzzle and the pieces won't go in. One of those kids, you'll bite it up trying to get it in there. Yeah, that, it could be a personality trait. But at five, throwing things is that's kind of next level. So um, 
Yeah, she's throwing tantrums at five. Tantrums usually stop at about three and a half to four when you're a leader. So yeah, she's throwing tantrums. It says to me that at five years old, uh, they must work somehow. You must feed it somehow or else she wouldn't keep doing it. Past the age of four, they only do what works. So it says to me that tantrums work. They must fluster you. They must upset you. Um, well, it's okay here, everybody. You can try it again next time, you know, that kind of stuff. Whenever you talk to a kid like that, this is how you, this is what you look like. <laughs> you're just, they're not, they're not respecting you. So just, yeah, yeah, it's all this mini therapy sessions when you're trying to reason with them, when they're being ridiculous. Well, you know, if you're, you're a really good girl and if you don't do, if you do that, you know, you can still do it. I would never talk like that. If a kid is throwing things and having tantrums just because things aren't going their way, no freaking way would I talk to them like that. <laughs> 